This evening, we would like to introduce the seniors playing in the last Cotter Hall field hockey events. For the Hall seniors, Captain Bridget Dugan. Yeah! Captain Olivia Pomerlo. Yeah! Captain Catherine Wasburn. Yeah! Senior Miyashe Shumi. I'm good on the side, right? Oh, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Senior Natalie Hucker. Senior Natalie Nordyke. Oh, oh, Senior Chloe Amaya. <laughs> and Senior Katya Kamala. <laughs> the Warriors entered the season contest with overall record 9, 3, and 2. Head coach Kat Hanks, assisted by Meg Chaplin, Alex Campagna, and Kim Michaels. And now we'd like to introduce our seniors from Connard and their parents. <laughs> Senior defender, Asiya Asani, accompanied by his dad, Amit Asani, and mom, Petro Kawana. Senior Vanessa Goodman, accompanied by your mom and dad, Wendy and Larry Goodman. <laughs> Senior Lindsay Hammond, accompanied by your mom and dad, Karen and Greg Hammond. Senior Eileen McGowan, accompanied by her mom, Mayor McGowan, and her sisters, Nora and Rosie. Let's go! Senior Caitlin Shulkin. That's my mom and dad, Ken and Carolyn Sultan. <laughs> Senior, Abby Swanton. Coming by mom and dad, Dennis and Irene Swanton. Senior Captain Annie Pugos, coming with Mom and Dad Lisa and Mark Pugos. Senior Captain Grace Burns. I call my mom and dad, Tammy and Peter Burns. <laughs> Senior Kaylee Warner. Come to my mom and dad, Robin and Keith Warner. Senior Captain Maeve Maloney, accompanied by Mom and Dad, John Gar Maloney.
And finally, Nora Policelli, accompanied by mom and dad, and Tom Policelli and her sister Grace. The Chief is approached by Kathy Callahan, assisted by Lee Kumpa and Tom Brenzia. The end of the season contest is over record of 8, 4, and 2. We now have to rise as the Iron America for the playing of our national anthem. Great wins for the Hall Warriors. They beat E.O. Smith 6-1. They also won at Weathersfield in a recent performance, 3-0. Outscoring the opposition so far this year, 57-14. So goals, not a problem. Yeah, they are doing a nice job, especially on the penalty corners. You'll see that when they line up. There's a foul inside the 16-yard circle. Uh, they set up for a penalty corner, and Hall has been executing on those very nicely. Connor, that's an area that they want to get better at, is executing on those penalty corners. Connor team, as uh, we talked about, they have some uh, good people up front as well. Caitlin Shulkin, three-sport athlete. Let's uh, talk about her a little yeah, bit. Yeah, she's a terrific athlete. I remember having her as a youth player for her first year in college. <laughs> she was throw the ball down there and let her just go get it, and you'll see some great, great speed out of Caitlin today. Jamie, let's talk about the dominance in this series. Both teams, as we talked about, have good records this year, but it's Connor that's traditionally stronger they haven't lost a haul since 2008. It was October of 2008. It's an yeah. undefeated streak of nine years. Well, it, it's the Kathy Cardini Callahan era because she's been a consistent coach here for a long, long time. And when you have a consistent coach like that, the program just gets better each year. So they become dominant. I give uh, Kat Hanks a lot of credit because she's building that program right now with some uh, changes in leadership down there, and she's building that up, and she, you're seeing results this year. Yeah, absolutely. Second consecutive winning season. So took a year of transition for her in the last couple of years, seen some fruition. Yes, no doubt. I think it, there's a lot of credit that goes to both coaches and the schools and the athletic director to support of field hockey to have it under the lights, number one. And number two is we have a very strong youth program that develops these players early on. So when they come into ninth grade, they actually have experience on the field, on the turf, competing against these towns. And so West Hartford's here to stay for field hockey. And you are one of those, the founding fathers, as it were, for the program. Well, Lee Kump is definitely our founding president, and I was glad to help out during that. So here we go. Hall. 6-0, one and one at home, but just 3-3 and one on the road this year. So we'll see if that home road uh, dichotomy plays to fruition here tonight. And it looks like they're set up both both in a 4-3-3. You have your four forwards in the front that's taking the initial touch, and it goes back to your midfielders, and then they start to move the ball up. 
Connor moving from right to left. And here they come at the midfield stripe as they try to get it down the left-hand side. You'll typically see both teams working on the sidelines to bring the ball up, and Connor pushing hard into the circle right away. Abby Swanton had an opportunity back outside to Warner, but it's picked off by the Warriors, and they start back in the other direction. 49 degrees our game time temperature tonight, so the kids playing in the short sleeves and shorts got to be a little nippy for them. They're fired up. They have adrenaline rush, and they don't need any long sleeves. <laughs> Number three for Connor is Maeve Maloney. Slides it ahead. So we call that a long drive or long hit. Uh, she drove the ball into the scoring area. They got a call, and so they're bringing it back outside the broken line circle, and she has to either move it five yards or has to touch one player before it goes in. So we're watching Maeve Maloney, the senior, two-year starter, very skilled, and uh, her head coach, Kathy Callahan, looks for her to use her quickness at all times. So that ball's coming out of that circle right now because she drove the ball in without moving it five yards or touching a second player, and that's a safety call. But Maeve is definitely a terrific athlete, three-sport athlete, again, basketball, lacrosse, and field hockey. Caitlin Shulkin on the far side. So they're setting up for a looks like a penalty corner here, and this is where the defense, Hall, has four flyers, I guess you could call them, and your goalie stays back in the cage. All of Connor can be up on this 16-yard circle, and then the rest of the Hall defense has to wait until the ball is inserted. Once it's inserted, you'll see the... the 50-yard line, they'll all come running in to try to stop this penalty corner. This is an area that Connor wants to work on, and let's see if they can execute. A deflected shot in front, knocked away, swept towards the net. They fight for it in front. Ball is still loose and cleared laterally by the Hall Warriors, and that was Sinead Marie who got it out of trouble temporarily. Yeah, great job by Hall. They had uh, Connor had two very nice opportunities there, and and the D held strong and got it out wide, and that's what you want to do, get it out wide, not up the middle. And the shot goes wide. And that will be Hall on the attack. It looks like they may have called uh, some sort of touch. Once again on corner for Susan. Also well, another corner, so the second yeah, corner. Yeah, I think Hall deliberately pushed play. it out of bounds on the back end line, and so that automatically results in a corner. With the corner, it has to come outside the circle before they can re-enter it back in and now it can go back in. A nice little defense on uh, Hall's part to get it out of there. Olivia Pomerlo came back for the Warriors that time to knock it out of harm's way. Fighting for it is Eileen McGowan for the Connor Chieftains. Just underway, three minutes gone by in the opening half. No score. If you joined us a year ago, that match ended in a 2-2 tie. Very thrilling, Jamie, in that one from start to finish. It, uh, it, it's always a pleasure to watch these two go at it, no matter what the sport is. Uh, the kids get very hyped for this, and there's a lot of nerves early on, but then coming about 10 minutes into the game, things will get a rolling here. Connor looking dominant early on here. They're really keeping the ball on the offensive end here and, and pressuring Hall's defense, which is very, very good defense. I was going to ask you, how much of this is Connor's – asserting themselves initially and how much maybe a little nerves on the part of Hall. Yeah, it's, it's probably a little bit of both on both sides. But, Connor, this is their home game. They're under the lights. They have senior night, so they are pushing hard. And we'll see what happens here. Swept towards the net and a nice save right there by the goaltender, Bob Brooks. She has eight shutouts as Anna on the year. Very vocal leader, according to Cat Hanks. And she says one thing she does well as a goaltender, sees everything very, very it's well. It's very important for your goalies to have those good angles, to understand where the ball is coming from. And they're the quarterback back there, directing their defense of where to go, who to match up with. It's pivotal that that person's a vocal player. Hall, even though the records are comparable, Jamie, maybe a slight underdog in this one, how important is it for them to get the opening goal in this match tonight? It would, it would be terrific for them just to even – give their defense a little bit of a, a relief right now and get it into their offensive end, just sure. get them to, to breathe for a minute and to uh, kind of collect everything. Um, but it would be great for them. It's very hard to play on the road when you're in West Hartford, but you're going down the street. Right, right. So Libby Geisler on the field now for Connor, just a sophomore. 
she also had some time. Uh, a lot of these players play both lacrosse and field hockey at both schools, including the coaches, uh, in reference to their coaching backgrounds as well. It's been all Connard in the early going so far as they continue to strive for the game opening goal. Here's Hall on the far side. Allie Crawford had it, lost it. There we it. go. It's still, it's still blue ball coming up. And again, on, on these clears, you'll see them on the sides. That's the way to clear the ball. On the sides, they'll get it down to the corner and cross it, similar to ice hockey and soccer. Got some pressure coming up here for Hall, which is great. Yeah, it's the first time today. And that's and Mia. And it's Mia Shumi. Yeah, Mia Shea. Been around field hockey a long time. Nice player. Six goals in her first ten games this year, Jamie. So she's she terrific is an on the post. Force. Oh, I'm sorry. She's terrific on the post. Uh, many times your forwards will line up on the left and the right post, waiting for rebounds coming off that goalie and just pounding them in. Mia does a very nice job of pounding those garbage goals in. Cat Hanks talked exactly about that during our phone conversation. So Hall gets the penalty corner here. They'll set up in across the 16-yard circle. Connor defense retreats. Let's see how they execute this. So here's Bridget Dugan to put the ball in play for the Warriors. She is our inserter. And they're going up to 12 o'clock. A, a nice little shot on goal there. Walked down in front. Another opportunity. Emily McDill, very active as a goalie. Been in, at it for a long time. Really strong goalie. And I'm sure down the stretch and into the tournament, Jamie, that's very, very important for your squad, like it is in you know any sport that has a goaltender. It really is. Both goalies have a lot of experience in playing, um, playing the sport and being part of this team, which is really important because the scores and the differential of scores start to really get low when it comes to playoff time. Timeout taken by the Chieftains comes with 22:57 to play in the opening half, and we have no score. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level, and they include Keating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network, College Prep Express, Cricket Press, and the McConnell Family Law Group, and at the all-conference level, Allied Printing. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council to make broadcasts like tonight possible. And a reminder, our next broadcast comes your way tomorrow afternoon. We'll be right back here at Connard inside in the gymnasium, 3 o'clock, as we'll have Unified Soccer, 25th anniversary of the Unified program. And we'll have soccer involving two West Hartford teams. Should be a lot of fun tomorrow. It, it, it's incredible. And what I love is all of these students get involved and help the Unified Sports here. And Tommy Varengi is a big-time leader in this school about unified sports, and there's just so many awesome kids that get involved. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah, it's terrific. He and uh, Kerry Massaro are the uh, coaches, and they have enough going on throughout their lives, and they add that as well. Uh, special people to do that. No doubt. Kerry working hard with the, uh, the girls' varsity soccer teams as well as being a, a teacher and coach here. And yeah. Both their, their plates are so full, but they always find time. And she has her soccer team at 10-3-3 three and three headed towards the CIAC Class Double L tournament. They have double L in uh, soccer, just the uh, single L here in field. And there's an opportunity for the Warriors. Nice fast break coming up. And I like how 17 is running up. Allie Crawford. Mia Shea getting in the right position. And good D by the Chieftains coming back that time. They got the penalty corner, though. So that's sometimes your goal. If you can't get a clean shot, if you can get a penalty corner, that's your second best opportunity of scoring. So it's get, draw that penalty, draw that penalty, and then now you have a penalty corner. So here's Dugan, second corner for Hall. Connor has had two already as well. Same mm -hmm. play, and it's kicked aside. A nice by rebound the by the goalie. McDill. And Connor clears it out. Good job defensively that time. Paula Selly for Connor. Another penalty inside the 16-yard circle, so that means um, another penalty opportunity for the Hall Warriors. Bridget Two Dugan, the uh, senior, sorry to interrupt, Jamie, sorry. talked about her with uh, Kat Hanks, said she's really coming out of her shell this year and has really, really helped this team. It is, it is fun to watch these kids grow throughout the season. And so that's three attempts in a row, penalty corner. It's an insert into the middle and uh, a one-shot. 
Let's see if Hall changes their strategy a little bit further down the line, maybe increase some chances of a better shot on goal. So what's interesting to me is the first four or five minutes dominated by Connor, and now they've tilted the field in the other direction have the Warriors yeah, the last four I minutes. I think Warriors are flexing their muscle a little bit here on the offense. They're showing them how to move the ball around and have opportunities, a variety of opportunities in front of that goal. They just don't need to pound one in. Good job of stick handling right there. That's Maeve Maloney. And for you ice hockey fans, that's Mia Shea Shumay, and she does a nice job of, I would call, forechecking in, in <laughs> hockey, right? <laughs> exactly. And then a terrific, terrific passing shot right in front of that goal. She needs a teammate that, to be there on that left post to punch that in. Okay. Get low, sweep that ball into the goal. But Shumi, a great effort that time. She just missed that far left post by just inches. Having a very active game so far. Ten minutes gone by, opening half, still no score. The rules continue to shift. Uh, each year they introduce different rules. They're trying to increase the, the speed of play with something introduced uh, many years back called a self-start instead of waiting for the whistle. They can just get started. But also aerial, aerial balls. And so we just saw an aerial ball there, and a uh, player put their stick in the air to try to receive that ball. And they can do that as long as there's not any players around that would be in danger. Okay. So you're seeing the ball in the air more now in field hockey. And they also call it playing 3D hockey where you can juggle it on your stick and bring it up the field versus keeping it on the actual how turf. How do you like that rule, Jim? I, I love it. I, I think these kids are so talented. They have the strength and incredible athletic athleticism to get the ball in the air to move it over flat defenses. And what I mean by that, your whole defense is up. Just a lofting ball up over that flat defense, you'll have a fast break if you can su successfully do it. Here's Hall off the intercept. And you'll, oh, very nice. Oh, just missed. So it'll be coming up on, I like how both of them are hustling right to the end. Excellent work by both teams. You'll see when they bring the ball up on both the sidelines, they'll work in triangles. And so there we have two or three of the, uh, of the players work together, bumping the ball back and forth. And each line, the defensive backer line, the midfield line, you'll see on the field right now, you'll see them work in triangles. And so the midfielders work up with the forwards, and they constantly pass back and forth to get the ball up, up field. So here's Maloney again for Cotter. And a beautiful up. So Libby Geisler's down there competing against that. And Geisler comes away with it. Natalie nice Nordyke back pass. Up there. And that's coming out. So when you see the referee have her hands way out like that, that yeah. means a 16 yard coming out. Goddard well, worked well in tandem that time. They did. It was a very nice quick clear and had actually an opportunity on goal. Looks like Marin Beverly coming into the game. I can just tell by her long blonde hair and her fast legs. <laughs> 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 Number seven, there you, she is. You called it. Beat uh, the PA announcer yeah. by seconds. Uh, that young lady can motor. She's a competitor. Allie so Crawford on the left-hand side bringing it up. Yeah, she gets it ahead to Liz Pillow. Yeah, Lizzie, Lizzie's just a very skilled field hockey Number player. Seven. One of those who played in Germany to uh, augment yeah. her skills during yeah. the uh, offseason. Yeah, there's uh, a few of these folks that opportunity opened up uh, for the last couple of years, and it's just an incredible opportunity where that's in, it's in the culture over there. It's yeah. really field hockey is an important thing for men and women. All over the field has been Caitlin Shulkin, but she loses control and Hall back the other way, down the far left-hand side. So as your left forward brings the ball up here, down into the corner, it's imperative that your other forwards get into space so they have someone to pass to or cross the ball to. Uh, so it's being off ball, the hustle off ball, just like in basketball, lacrosse, and soccer, is m just as important as being a hustler with ball. Here's a foray for the counter Chieftains. So it looks like she's going to do a dump and run, and the defense is there to stop it. But here's Maloney for Connor. That's a reverse flick shot. It's going to come out because it's dangerous because it hit the def defensive player. That reverse flick shot is a very, very effective way of being, uh, being able to change the direction of your defender. Uh, instead of always, as you can see, it's all the sticks are shaped to the right. Everyone right. has to play, we will say, right-handed. Uh, the truth is, if you're left-handed, that's your power hand. So those that come up to me and say, hey, I'm left-handed. Do you have a left-handed stick? Don't worry. You have an advantage because that's your power hand. Well, that's a 
That's why I golf righty as a left hand. Yeah, all right. Same thing. A very nice little clear by uh, Hall. Now they have a fast break set up. There's Crawford again. Doing a nice job on that left hole. He's She's a sophomore. He's been around the ball up there. Bridget Dugan, one of the senior captains for Hall. Big pressure. Nice stop by the defense there. Good Th defensive effort by the Chieftains for sure, right in front. I think it was Ashani, I'm not sure. Yeah, Ashani, the uh, senior. And here comes Connor over midfield. And you have a couple of nice passes. Break right up there. But broken up by Natalie Nordyke of Hall. I think at this point the, the kids are loosening up, the nerves are, are gone, and the competition is now settling in. And you can see it's very tight. Uh, it, you know, shots aren't as frequent, and uh, more shots and more possessions are contested, which is really important to attack the ball uh, on defense instead of waiting for that offensive player to come juke you and go right by you like in hockey. Right. So midway through the opening half, and I would suspect you expect a, a low-scoring tilt. They do. Does this bode well for the tournament, Jamie, as they get ready for it? It does. Uh, this is this is the game they get up for, right? This right. is the one. They get up for a lot of games, but this is really important. It's bragging rights in town when you're downtown getting an ice cream. You see sure. your, see your uh, competitors and your teammates there. So uh, this kind of competition and intensity is, is paramount when you get to the playoffs. Mm bring it every night and every day at practice, I hope. Looks like Maloney working it up that left sideline again, trying to get up there. And her left forward is up, up field there. Looks like Kaylee Warner up there, number 40. Yes. Okay. We just saw an interesting battle between Maloney and Olivia Pomerlo of, of Hall. What a matchup that is. She is a knockdown defender. And what I mean by that, she does not wait for the ball to come to you. She will go get it, Olivia will. Pat Hanks calls her one of her very best tacklers she's ever had. It's, it's, it's terrific to watch that. Being aggressive as a defender and in this sport is not about body contact. It's about being aggressive and having the confidence to attack the ball. It's a, a relatively clean game. Not a lot of fouls called by the uh, referees that are out there today. And in some types of lacrosse, there's lots of miss hits and hacks and uh, body ball fouls. Uh, but this one's pretty clean. Nice. Higher the skill, the less the calls. And you have two very good officials out there today with Lauren Silva and Kevin Keeney. Two people you recognize right off the bat. Yeah. Being yeah. Uh, I've learned a, a long time official yourself. Yeah, I've learned a lot from both of them, both on this field and on the lacrosse field. They really are good. 13 15 to go, opening half. Still waiting for that game opening nice goal as Allie right Crawford comes down the left side. Good defensive play, though, by Eleanor Brown getting back for the Chieftains. So Ellie's been on this this far seat. Ooh, nice shot on goal. It's loose oh, at the nice far pressure post. By, very nice pressure by uh, by Hall. I love how they attacked the cage when that ball was in the air and cross. And you saw Emily McDeal with her stick up in the air trying to knock that down. She's allowed to do that. She can also knock it down with her left hand, too. She okay. has a, like, almost feels like a catcher's mitt. She can bang it down yeah. or she can use her stick. Connor coming up now on a nice fast break. May Maloney all around it. Very good opportunity for Kaylee to punch here. Kaylee Warner is dangerous for the Chieftains. But and good defense. That looks flag. like Maggie Grant by the stride. Yeah. Number 22. Do you recognize oh. it? Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. it. You got it. She is another top-notch defender. I think she plays center, center back back there for Cat and is really the, the stopper right there in the middle. Defensive stalwart that uh, she calls her. Yeah, yeah. You need that. You ha as a goalie, you need to have that person that you rely on. And I think she has three very good defenders that the goalies can really rely on down there. So we got so some decent back and forth and very nice shot on goal. Oh, and a goalie. kick save made nice that time job. by Bob Ruff. Very nice. The kick, actually, the, the goalie can get a foul on, on kicking the ball and raising it. Oh, very oh. nice save by Bob Ruff again. She's made two or three in this sequence. Excellent work. Very good angles, using her body well, keeping the kick uh, the rebound low because if the goalie kicks it out and it's an aerial ball, that could be a penalty corner. Oh, okay, okay. 
the nice thing with that is that she's keeping keeping her foot down, keeping down on the ground, and when she has good contact, then she does it. Sometimes new goalies, they'll kick and miss it, and it rolls under for a goal. Oh, boy. And that's heartbreaking. It sure is. But you can tell this goalie's had some nice preparation before coming out here today. Both of these goaltenders here tonight at either end, eight shutouts on the season, both teams allowing under a goal per contest. So they know what it takes to get things done defensively, that's for sure. Very impressive stats. That's an example of a self-start there that you don't have to wait for everyone to set up. You just, when you know it's your ball, you just start bringing it in. What you don't see back in the days in field hockey, they used to have long hits and a lot of hitting the ball 20, 30 yards down the field. Yeah. And really, that's like a 50-50 ball when you do that. So you see more possession play now. So you see this ball on stick is what I would say from the sidelines. Keep the ball on stick. Keep the ball on stick. Possess, possess. And then good things will create from there. If you just dump the ball and try to run, it's almost a turnover every time. It's, it, you can make the analogy, Jamie, I think, to football. The, the, the better teams have the ball longer. They have that time of possession. They no can doubt. grind it out. And I think you see that here. Yeah, and wear down the defense on top of it. Sure. And they've got a penalty corner here. So that ball is a body ball. came off the foot of a, of a defensive player, which automatically is a penalty corner. Happened inside the 16-yard circle. And so you have the person with the ball as the inserter, and then all of your offensive people are around the circle. The ball has to leave the circle before it can go back in and try to, try to go. Because that gives the opportunity for the defense to get back. Very sure. nice insert. She controls it and tries to hammer it on top with a sweep shot. Nice defense, pulls it out. Still in there. What an opportunity for Gabriella Urso that time. Looks like another penalty corner for Connard. So back-to-back -back penalty corners, they're third and fourth of the opening half, and they hadn't had one, Jamie, for 15 minutes of clock time. Yeah, yeah. These are pivotal, pivotal possession points. It's what the coaches will look back on the tape and analyze their execution on these because this is these are the very good opportunities to score. Not the best, but very good ones. Different nice strategy. Insert. Yeah, coming on a different side. They can pick which side they want. They can pick either side. It doesn't matter. They don't have to go one side. But Hall's doing a nice job of getting in there and attacking the ball instead of waiting for it. Sometimes it does end up in a penalty, but they didn't let them just blast away on goal. Switching sides to the penalty corner on the inserter. Yeah. And the fifth of the opening half for the Chieftains. They tried a long hit on that. Nice job by the defense clearing it out to the sides. If you clear it up the middle, it will come back to you in the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, we see that a lot in ice hockey. No doubt. Lacrosse as well. Tell the goalie, clear to the wings, please. Right. Nice stick handling there. You can really tell those that have that stick handling capability, their confidence on the field's incredible. And they're the ones that need to be in those center positions to control the ball. And they're the ones that take the initiative a lot offensively. No well. doubt, no doubt. And draws the defenders and then can dump. Uh, sometimes your right forward is very speedy person, but she also has a nice stick as well, so she can get a, a cross and pass across the front of the goal. That's a nice insert into this 16 yard, but they couldn't convert. Deflected Come just wide of the left post. Coming out, Hall ball. So Connard threatened, had three consecutive penalty corners, but couldn't dent the net. What a giveaway. A little tricky. We just talked about going to the sides. Uh-oh, and in there's front. a goal. They score. Yes, there is. Right in front. Looked like Lindsey Hammond got her stick right. on it in tandem with Eileen McGowan that time. Way to go, Lindsey, in the right position. She's on the left post, and most of the goals in field hockey are scored off a rebound and so if your off ball players are in position that's opportunistic field hockey excellent job and pressure uh, by the connor chieftains warner gets credit for the goal had already uh, gone in before hammond got her stick on it all right so it comes with 720 to play here in the opening half and the home team has a one nothing advantage Great defensive pressure to get that ball back to turn it over and really push it down into the circle to get that goal. Excellent job by them. And Hall's back on the offensive there. They're not going to sit down on this. Jamie, how imperative is it for their psyche 
to get this one back before the end of the half. No doubt, no doubt. You want to go in with positive momentum. I'm a big fan of that, and even coaching basketball with so much scoring going on, mm. it it pains me to have the other team have that last kind of momentum push. So, sure. uh, they and they got plenty of time, plenty of time, and plenty of athletes out here to to be able to get the ball, which they do now, and get it back in here into the into space. Actually, back up that insert. Still going, Connor Ball. Grace Neidl on the uh, far side of the field. Junior, two-year starter. No doubt. She's been on varsity for all three years of her high school career so far. The same thing with Ellie Brown. Important contributors to learn a lot that first year. As now they, they're starters. Sure. We thank Ellie's mom and dad, Beth and Tom, for getting me the vest to wear here tonight. Oh I yeah. came. Ill prepare in terms of dress. Here comes Connard back in the other direction on the attack. Love seeing the off ball players, the forwards up ahead of the ball, giving the options for that player with the ball to, to be able to dump to and to be able to pass to. Maloney and Washburn had battled on the far side of the field. Well, we've called Maloney's number and name a yeah, lot tonight. She is definitely and an integral part of this offense. Yeah. There's no question the ball runs through her, That's and that's fine. That's great. Uh, another reverse flick, a, re a, re a reverse sweeping hit, mm -hmm. which can you can lose control, and so sometimes it can result in a turnover. But it looks like Connor just got it right back. Opportunity to the Way side to keep of it the net. Now, as long as the ball is in bounds, it's fine. Okay. Her feet can be out of bounds, but if the ball stays in bounds, she can play it from out of bounds on that end line. Her feet were out of bounds on that end line. Still showing great speed was Eileen McGowan that time trying to chase it down. No doubt. Very similar to uh, as, as we have uh, game seven of the World Series coming up. Uh, yes. That you run out every ball, right. every ball, every base hit. And the same thing here. Shot and a save. A beautiful by save. Wow. Scary part there for the Hall. But they got it out, and now it's their ball coming out. 16-yarder. Anna, the junior, got her left toe on it that time to knock it away. Oh, it looks like they gave it to no, they gave it to Connor. All right, it was uh, over the end line by Hall, so they give it to him at the 25-yard line um, for Connor, and so they get the ball back. That's a raised ball into a, a player, so it's an automatic turnover. Hall gets the ball coming up, moving left to right here. Intercepted by the Chieftains. And Libby Geiser looks like number four. Right in the middle of it. And good D by the Warriors. And Beverly there comes down the right side. There comes Beverly. Cuts to the middle. Nice, nice, nice control with the possession, though. She took on two defenders and really tried to get the ball to her friend that's lateral to her. So when they clear the ball, there needs to be someone through and someone to the side. So you, ha you always have an option to the front, to the side, and hopefully the defense sets up in a redirect if you need them in the back. So you have multiple opportunities. Oh, it was a good thought of a pass trying to hit Natalie Huckler in the middle. Natalie Huckler's almost six foot two, I think. I'm not sure what the, uh, the <laughs> program has her at, but <laughs> she's got a tremendous wingspan, so can cover some major ground uh, to deflect balls and also to receive balls. Be a good post player for uh, the basketball team. No doubt. That's six two without bun. She puts her hair in a bun at six foot five. <laughs> Pass intercepted. Chieftains try to counter. There's Maloney again, Look right in the middle of everything. Looking at her work, working through three people right there. Wow. And Olivia doing some nice defensive work there. Look at her. Nice. Two. Not a single hack, not a foul. Excellent, excellent tackle by Olivia and brings it up with her Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse ears on. Tried to hit Beverly with the pass, but countered back in the other direction. And here's Maloney again, down the near sideline. So we haven't seen an obstruction call at all. I actually have seen a couple that happened out in the field. And obstruction, is, and that's what the beauty about this sport is, is that you can't hide the ball or shield a player from attacking the ball. Oh. And out of all the sports that are out there, we're so used to shielding and put our body between the ball. This is the only sport that it, you have to present the ball for competition. So it's a true competitive sport, right? Yeah, right, right. And so if you do that, if you move your body to shield the player from playing the ball, that's called obstruction. If a second person comes in on your team and 
and boxes somebody out from playing the ball. That's third party obstructions. We haven't seen any obstruction calls. I've seen a couple happen, but uh, it's so many calls to make. It's, I'm not saying anything about the referees at all. Sure. Uh, but it, many times you'll see it when it gets clumped up. You'll see too many people around the ball and inadvertent obstruction happens and they have to call it. It's a turnover. 140 to go. Opening half. Connard in front on the goal by Warner. One to nothing. Nice Hall trying little, to get nice it back. Nice little dump and chase. Nice little stop and tackle there by Connor. But here's Hall pushing hard. They got a minute and a half, and I'm sure that's what uh, 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 Coach Cat is talking about right now to execute here. Maybe get a penalty corner. Pillow tried to put it in play, but it was knocked away by Ellie Brown. Still pushing up. Hall staying with it. Ellie fighting. Players didn't know where the ball was momentarily. Now you have a fast break. You see your right forward already released upfield just in case we got that ball back. We as in Connor. Right. We're at home at Connor. <laughs> Less than a minute to go here in the opening half. Long pass ahead, picked it off. Ellie with a nice reverse clearing ball. Burning clock, which is great. Inside of 40 seconds to go in the half. So Pommeler picks it up, brings it where the spot of the foul is, and now she can self-start or insert like she just did. Shumi tried to get it ahead, intercepted by the Chieftains. That's a hack by Natalie Nordyke. When you go to attack the ball and tackle the ball, you can hit ball, but if you hit the stick before you hit ball, that's called a hack, and that's a turn that's a, it's the offensive ball coming up. And it hit the stick of Asani that time. Zo Ferrado bringing the ball up. Zoe. First time we've called her name tonight here in the opening half. Another lacrosse player as well. And that's the end of the opening half. Good half of field hockey. The home team. The Goddard Chieftains in front by the score of one to nothing as Kaylee Warner, the senior forward, got the only goal. Game was 7.20 to go in this opening stanza. And Jamie. Brief recap, your what thoughts a, on what this a, opening half. What a feeling for Kaylee, huh? Yeah. Boy, she, it, I think the hometown got the adrenaline going, and they got that first punch in there. I expect Hall, who gets the ball second half, to come out blazing, absolutely blazing. An evenly matched game. If we look back at the penalty corners and the amount of time on each offensive end, I think it's very even, and that's what we expected for tonight. Excellent. Well, four and a half minutes from now, we'll resume play with second half action. Right now, the War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the captain's level, and they include Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludgan, and the Connard and Hall PTO. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council. And speaking of the council, they'd like to invite you to the fifth annual tailgate fundraiser to support athletics at Connard and Hall High Schools. The event will be held November 11th at Town Hall from 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. and it includes food, beverage, and a silent auction. The War Chief Sports Council honors a coach of the year from both Hall and Connard at the tailgate event. So please come to celebrate high school athletics in West Hartford, November 11th from 6.30 to 10.30 at Town Hall for a great cause and a great night to celebrate high school sports. And all proceeds from the event go directly to support Hall and Connard Athletics. For more information and to purchase your tickets, please visit the website at www.war-chief.net. That's war-chief.net. That's a great event. I've gone the last couple of years. And... Um, Coaches from both sides, great food, great, great drink. They have music, silent auctions. It's a very, very nice night. And, again, all the proceeds go to the War Chief Council, which then eventually goes to both schools. It's really terrific. And, uh, again, last year, Jamie, they raised $20,000 from the event, and all that money goes back to the Hall and Conrad Athletic Programs. What a great cause. Yeah, once again, this community steps up over and over again in all of these different types of fundraisers we have. And it's very nice that the War Chief Council has been established and helps contribute back so we can buy things. You know, buy things like benches or uh, scoreboards or 
painting of certain areas. So they really help with the infrastructure to maintain our sports and our schools. Yeah, and also maybe to uh, contribute to a couple of kids that otherwise couldn't play sports now that it's the exactly. uh, pay for play that's going in play. It's so It's a great opportunity and a, night and a great council. And it starts with uh, Paul McConnell and Dennis Swanton at the top and yeah. uh, a lot of great people involved. I know yeah. Beth Brown is involved, Mark Walker. So uh, like you said, you said it best, people of West Hartford really step they up. They do, they do, and, and over and over. Some of the same names keep popping up too all the time, <laughs> right? Which, which is pretty great. <laughs> exactly. Just a reminder that uh, we'll have the Unified Soccer broadcast for you tomorrow right here on WHC-TV Channel 5. And then we'll be back here at McKee Stadium on November 18th, 1 o'clock kickoff between Hall and Connard. Matt Sousasimo's Chieftains 4-3 and three on the season. They'll play at Glastonbury on Friday night. Hall, you lose your quarterback. It could be a tough season. Frank Robinson, an excellent coach. His team just 1-6. and six. They'll play actually tomorrow night at South Windsor. Checking girls' soccer, the Connor Chieftains 10-3-3. Three and three. They're ranked 14th in double L. Hall 6-7-3. and three. They're also going to the tournament. They played each other on Monday and played to a 1-1 one -one tie. The boys' soccer teams both going to the tournament and both having great seasons. Connor 9-3-3, three three, Hall 9-2-4. They played to a one-all tie at Hall on Monday. Volleyball, we had the game for you last Friday. It was a three-game sweep for the Hall Warriors in that one. Both teams ending the campaign at 12-8. and eight. And in swimming, we had that uh, meet for you last week. Both teams had excellent campaigns. Hall just a little bit better as they defeated Hall. Uh, Connor in that one, 96 to 94. So a lot of great sports teams in West Hartford, it, Jamie. It really is incredible, and it, it starts in the youth. Um, and we have a ton of volunteers in town in all of these leagues, baseball, football. They go, they've got flag football now. Yeah. Um, what we are in need of is a kind of a youth or middle school volleyball program, which we don't have right now. So, oh. I mean, uh, thumbs up to both squads being 12 and 8. Uh, when you don't really have a feeder program coming in here. Sure. And uh, I'm very impressed. I'm, I'm just very impressed by the coaches at both schools. Right. You talked about the football, you know, all the Sosasmos, uh, you know, <laughs> right. as well as um, <laughs> uh, Frankie and uh, Coach Cadu over there at Hall. Uh, they're just really incredible people, and that's where the, the basis of all these programs need to start with excellent, excellent coaches. Exactly right. Talk about the coaches here, Kathy Callahan, Cat Hanks. What are their instructions for their teams uh, going into the second half? Well, I'm going to guess that Cat's going to talk about we need to control the ball a little bit more. Let's be, uh, let's clean up uh, some of the careless play and possess the ball a little bit more. They had nice opportunities. I think they can definitely convert on that. But they've had some careless giveaways in the midfield. I think what uh, Kathy Callahan is talking about right now is nice momentum. Let's keep up the pressure, all right, and let's possess the ball in the offense as much as we can. Uh, to take any type of pressure off of our uh, off of our goalie, and guess what? They got the ball and they're heading up the field right now. Right. Interesting. In the first half, first ten minutes belonged to Connard. Second ten minutes belonged to Hall, and then Connard asserting themselves over the final ten minutes got the goal with 7:20 to go in the opening half, and that's the margin of their lead right now. So we have a raised ball. Good opportunity here for Connard here. They're at the 25, at the 30, and they're going to be pressuring in. Probably go to the wing and then bring the ball in across the front of the face of the goal, like that. It starts with Maloney trying to get it ahead, but good defense by the Warriors, and they get it momentarily out of harm's way. It looks like Grace Knight will bring the ball up there. Again, working in their triangle, that right forward is down there in the middle down there. It looks like Caitlin Shulkin, number two, I'm going to guess. Yes. Exactly. She had received the pass from Maloney, but it was taken away subsequently by the Warriors. And there's a lifted ball, and they're able to go get that. They call that lifted ball a dangerous one because it was heading towards two players, even though they looked like they were going to handle that. Connor tried to put it in play. Hall on the intercept, but they knock it out on the near sideline. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, you'll see how the defensive line is staggered on an angle, which is really – really a great way to have your defense so if they get past one layer there's another person waiting and another mm -hmm. layer sometimes some of these more inexperienced teams will have just a very flat three three players across and it just takes one move to get by it on the attack the chieftains Vanessa Goodman trying to lead the chieftains downfield that'll be Isabel Lubin to put it in play for Connor
nice defense, getting it out nice and wide, getting it upfield, looking for those forwards to get up to. So they have options to pass to ahead, to the side, and behind. And let's go, Hall. Take it here. Wow, the Warriors As try a to coach, start you're the screaming attack. release. You want your forwards to release. That looks like Lizzie Pillow going at it. Nice it control by Lizzie. She had a player up ahead yep. in terms of Allie Crawford. They call that a raised ball because the ball went above her knee on the uh, defensive player, so they called her for the foul. But it was a nice play by Pillow. Intercepted in the midfield by Hall. And Maggie Grant get the ball back, which is nice. Get it up. Slid ahead. That's Pomelo over there on defense. Sticks down all the time. That's what the coaches scream. Get your sticks down. That turf field has really changed this game. Really has changed this game. Oh, I bet. Yeah, it is really hard to manipulate that ball in, in grass with divots, long grass, wetness. And there's an example of 3D field hockey right there. Yeah, I was she just She lifted say. up and carried it. And it's very tricky for the defense to be able to get that ball when they have an aerial ball like that. And it's a nice little play. They got the skill to do it. I was just going to ask you yeah. how much skill that takes it for the player to do A lot of practice. That. That's the fun stuff, right? That's sure. That's what you do outside of practice. You get that. Get to know the stick like the back of your hand. It's like dribbling behind the back in basketball. She could run all the way up the field with that. The only way the defense can get after that ball is if they actually make contact on the ball first, which almost invariably you hit the stick and it's a hack. Okay. Um, but then that offensive person cannot go ahead and run into people with the stick up like that with the ball on the stick. At higher levels, especially in college, they call that 3D, 3D field hockey, and you see it in the air more than on the ground. I was watching a match recently on the Big Ten Network, and I saw that quite a few it's times. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah, they're just incredible athletes with incredible skill and, uh, and somewhat dangerous, in my opinion, if I'm myself there. Sure, <laughs> sure. I could, I could see how. Sure. Yeah. Uh, UConn uh, is, 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 is the team, of, is the team of, of collegiate field hockey for years, and it's just right and down the street. And what a year they're having this year yeah, as well. They, they really are incredible. Cat played there. Cat played there her first year of college, uh, which is very impressive. Here's a shot on shot goal. Save by yep. Anna. Oh, she made a nice save. Okay. Very dangerous. Eileen McGowan that time. Very nice. And then what happened, the ball came up on the goalie off her foot and it became aerial. So yep. they call that a dangerous play. And that's why Connor was awarded that penalty corner. Okay. But hey, you would take a penalty corner over a goal if I was the goalie, right? Sure. Any day. Absolutely. Yeah, goalie stayed locked in on that. I was proud of her. In ice hockey, we'd call that a good penalty. Yes. Trying to hold the near side post. It's loose. And like a true ice hockey goalie, you can go down as a goalie here. You can block mm -hmm. with any part of your body. You can't sit on the puck right. in hockey. You can't sit on the ball here. Right. But you can go down. The hard thing for a goalie when they go down is getting back up. Sure. It's almost like you're a turtle. With, the, with all those pads. Right. Uh, but it's an effective strategy, especially if you're having a lot of pressure on the ground and they're not lifting the ball. Laying down sometimes will, will save that game for you. Close that lower portion of the net. I think that's what Bob Ruff's thinking right now. It's like, I can't let anything in. We're going to get back in this game, and I'm going to be the one person that's going to get you back in it right. by preventing them from scoring. Because she knows how dangerous another goal would be at this juncture. It is. It's like a soccer match. The, a two-goal lead is, is a, a nice position to be in if you're winning. Right. Caitlin Shulkin back in the lineup for the Cotter Chieftains. Looks like Zoe's coming back in, too. It looks like Libby Geisler and uh, Kaylee Werner as well getting ready to sub in. Kaylee Werner, the lone goal scorer so far. one nothing Cotter with 24 minutes to play in regulation time. She is going to have a smile on her face tomorrow as long as they can hold out and get this win. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well deserved. So what I'm seeing is distance, distance on the ball from the, from the stick from Hall, and they need to keep the ball on stick as much as they can because, like there, these 50-50 balls are getting burned by that. So they need to possess more and control the ball more and give their defense a break. Opportunity here. Scary Shulkin. spot. Oh, what a stop by Bob Ruff. She went down. Standing on her head. I love it. Wow. You know what she's saying? Not today, baby. <laughs> They got Indeed. Good for her. I mean, she's sweating bullets. I think the whole hall sideline sweating bullets. Maybe up here in the in the booth too. <laughs> but you love the toughness. 
Right. There's two types of goalies. Normally, they fall into two types of categories. One is very, very good on angles and is predictable. And then sometimes you get these ice hockey goalies that play field hockey and somewhat unpredictable mm. but aggressive. Right. And sometimes when you need to get back in the game, you need that person in there. And what Bob Ruff did right there, I got to give her a pat on the back for that. I love that stuff. It's this ironic you're talking, talking about the ice hockey because Caitlin Shulkin plays ice hockey, and yeah. she was behind the defense that time. Yeah, McGowan does too on Connor. Yeah, those guys are uh, valuable field hockey players when they know their experience in the ice. That, what just happened in the corner, you do not see often at all in field hockey. Um, basically, um, it's called a bully, and, and it's almost like a draw, or you just throw it up like a tip ball in basketball. Okay. It's they uh, had to determine who was going to get the ball in that one, and so you have a um, kind of almost like a face-off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting to see, Jamie, that Connor continues to put the pressure on, even though they have the one nothing lead. I like that, don't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I can see that in your eye, Pete, that you'd <laughs> like to do be that kind of aggressive coach. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't give up. You don't ever give up, and uh, you keep your foot down, keep the pressure on. Sure. And uh, that keep builds confidence. When you start playing in NFL prevent defense, bad things happen. Yeah, prevents prosperity, as I always say. Right. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. I know Steve Boyle has uh, done this color commentary before in the past in, in his work in the multi-sport kind of arena, mm. making sure the kids are playing. And this is a perfect example of all the kids and how many different sports they play and why they're such smart athletes and not just one, one sport. They right. play all these different sports. They all cross over. And it's really important for a good, well-rounded high school athlete to be playing more than just one sport. And um, it pays uh, off in the long run. It really does. Yeah. It really does. And their body's in better condition as well. Sure. Versus the same pounding and the same motions each time. You know, especially in, in I have three daughters and, and female athletics are, is really important to us. Another parallel to the Boyle family. No <laughs> doubt about it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, having them play multiple sports and is really, really important. And all these kids do. They're, they're incredible kids. Liz Pillow tried to start the attack for the Warriors, who have had very little uh, offensive time in the Connard zone in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Boy, they're getting an opportunity here, and this needs to be their spark. I'm sure Kat and Coach Cha Chaplin are talking to them now. This is your spark. This is your penalty card. They're good at this, so let's get this. So th I like that. Do you see that option? Yeah. So in the last penalty corners, they would insert to the top and just blast. This time they insert and then they did a little dump and they didn't connect there, but I like that. And it keeps the uh, defense questioning where you're going to go with that ball. Sure. Versus building up the wall like you see in soccer and prevent that blast from the top. Yeah, and you don't, you don't telegraph things, so if you vary it, they're yep. not going to be expecting it. Yeah. Keep the defense off guard. Yeah, it was a good, good shift of strategy there for Hall. Let's see if they can get some pressure on the goal here and Here's maybe Palmer, punch one in. Pomerleau with the ball. See how high up their defense is? Their defense is aggressive. I mean, you only have one person, okay, two people back behind the ball. I like that. They're pushing up. They need to get a goal here. Sensing the urgency are the Hall Warriors. Towards that end. McDill with a beautiful save. She does a beautiful job of keeping the ball down on the ground, so she's not lifting the ball on her save. She's locked on, locked on that ball right now. And she kicked that ball right out of traffic, Jamie, which was very important. Out to the wings. Get it out to the wings. So they long hits just don't work anymore in this game. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all about possession. You've said it a couple of times, yeah. and, and every time they try the long hit, it backfires. It feels good to try to get it out of your defensive zone, but I tell you, it just gets turns on you quickly. Maggie Grant and Olivia have this no problem at all. Nice job to do. And he called third party obstruction. What happened is that both Maggie and Olivia had a play for the ball. Maggie ran between the other defender trying to get it, and oh. then Olivia got it. Okay. So that's what that third party obstruction is. And that's only called on the offense when you obstruct the ball from someone playing the ball. Nice insert, very nice insert. And the shot just goes wide. Wow. They had an opportunity from about 10 feet out in front. And what the coaches talk to their offensive players when they're in the 16-yard circle, when you're in a scoring opportunity, is just take a half a second just to look to see where the goalie is not okay. versus just turning and blasting. If you take a half a second 
have the confidence in your stick skills to be able to put it where the goalie isn't. Yeah. Just aim it and, and yeah, fire. I use slang in lacrosse as shoot where the goalie ain't. Right. Right. Makes it's, it's a pretty simple notion, but that's what they need to do. Exactly. It takes confidence, skill sets, and maturity inside that paint to do that inside the cir circle. Nice little tackle there by 13. Yeah, getting back Sinead Marie that time. Sarkeesian had a nice, no, we're sorry, number 13. Sinead Marie had a nice block there. Mm. But uh, Connor gets another penalty corner. It's their eighth of uh, keeping keep track of this game. Yeah. <laughs> trying, try, trying to. Yeah. Unofficially, this is I their eighth corner. Next to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I, I should have kept stats. <laughs> That's an important stat. Mick, uh, was Bob Ruff says, get it out of here. Shulkin trying to chase it down, but good defense by Ali Crawford. And here we go. Let's work together to bring that ball up on the sideline. Out of bounds. Here comes Connard. So that's your self-start. You just get started when you're all set. Players have to be approximately five yards away before they can play it. And nice insert from afar. Good defensive clear by Pomerleau. And again, just out of the reach of Caitlin Shulkin. She was right to the left of the netminder Bob Rip that push. time. And that was a push by uh, Caitlin trying to, I love it. She's aggressive. Yeah, Getting oh the yeah. ball. She's number two. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love it. And it's her ho ice hockey taking control. Plays for Brett Susie during the winter. Very fast, knows the field well. And a great job on those corners, according to Kathy Callahan. Opportunity kicked oh away yeah. by Bob Ruff. Bob Ruff is locked on this half. She robbed Pizzaferrato that time. Yeah. She, it's not 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 this half. She's saying, right? Working hard, keeping this keeping this hall team in it. One nothing, Cotter. Sixteen ten to play in regulation. The only goal, Kaylee Warner. Game was seven twenty to go in the opening half. So Cotter is 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 winning the midfield. It's winning the midfield. And the midfielders are the ones that get it up to the forwards, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why Connor's having more opportunities. Their midfielders, and you can see Maeve Maloney, is controlling the ball in the midfield, and there's more opportunities. So the midfielders have to step up for Hall, get some control, and see if they can set up some offense, get some shots on goal. The teams, Jamie, that control the midfield are going to win blank. How much of the time? Ooh. Uh, Greater than 50% of the game. Sure. Yeah, sure. greater than 50%. As, as high as 70 or 80? Or? Uh, it could be. It depends. It, normally, your most skilled player is there at that center mid. Okay. Uh, directing traffic, controlling the ball, controlling the pace of the game, and distributing the ball to their best assets. Like we see Maeve Maloney doing it for Connor. No doubt. No doubt. It's a big game for her right now. Lots of touches, lots of control, good decision making. It's really the quarterback of the team. Transition for Connor from defense yeah, to three offense. Three on two right here. Three on two. Here's Shulkin trying to chase That's it down. That's a nice little move. It's a little dump in the corner and pop it across. Beautiful. And garbage time. Pomerlo initially got the stick on it, and then Bob Riff kicked it into the corner. Yeah. Beautifully worked by Connor because they had their folks on the left post, the right post in the center of the stroke line, which mm -hmm. is the line that's in front of the goal. You draw the ball across like Caitlin did, and one of those three should probably get a stick on that. So you're you're impressed with how well organized the offensive attacks can be for them. Yeah, I know they've been struggling a little bit uh, on scoring more goals. They want to score more goals. Sure. Uh, right now their their formations and their and their control of the ball looks pretty nice. They've scored just 25 goals so far this year, allowing just 11 though. So that's still a great more than two to one differential. Nice. It's coming out Hall ball. 14 minutes left. There's a long hit that doesn't work again. Yeah. Out of the reach of Shulkin. Pomerlo but back defensively for the Warriors. Your mentality, though, Pete. Think about it. You're getting oh, sure. pressure, pressure, pressure. Get this ball out yeah. of oh, here. Oh, sure, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I definitely empathize with him for sure. I can I can just hear the Hall of Fame announcer Chuck Caton from 18 years of Whaler misery saying, "Clear it up the middle." <laughs> and we've seen a lot of those. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's a nice clear up the right hand side, and uh, they get the ball back out of bounds, and here comes Hall, and this is an important possession for them. 13 minutes left to go here. They need to get some confidence with some offensive firepower and just some it, opportunities right if, if not anything else just to generate something that they can feel good about offensively you got it here's a nice little opportunity here need the forwards up there though to push
push down on that ball, get it in the circle. And Grace Nidal did a nice job defensively for Connor. Nice. Very responsible defensively. Number 11 was back there too. Uh, Gabby Urso was back there. Mm -hmm. And now so you have a side in here. Again, ball has to travel five yards or touch someone else before it enters the circle. And that prevents someone from just blasting a shot and knocking someone out. Oh, I got Yeah, you. it's a safety oh. thing. Okay. In a sport where they don't wear a helmet. Exactly. Yeah. And we don't want them to. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says that. Yeah. yeah. We know. It changes the game. It changes the way things. This is an incredible game, especially when played with skill and athleticism. Yeah. As we're seeing here tonight. No doubt. Yeah, when it comes to field hockey in Northern Connecticut, we are fortunate to have both Condard and Hall be right there on the on the likes of, of like a Glastonbury and a Cheshire. Mm. In fact, Condard beat Glastonbury this year, and Hall had a very close uh, one goal game against Glastonbury. And Glastonbury is, has won the uh, state championship before. Sure. And so. it was not not many years ago. And Maureen Perkins does a great job at Glastonbury. Over Perennial there contender. Her. They really are, and they don't have the same youth feeder program. So it, it, it's a lot, it's a big, a testament, big testament to her as a coach sure. and the program she puts out there each year. But right now, Connor and Hall are right on their heels. So, and Cheshire's a strong program too. And there's other strong L, M, and S schools that have good field hockey. So state of field hockey is getting better in the north, but Connor and Hall is pacing that. They're, they're, they're definitely the pace setters for that. And again, Hall 9, 3, 2, and 1. Connor 8, 4, and 2. Timeout exercised by Cat Hanks. And the Hall Warriors. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the varsity level. And they include Low Tide Photography, Dave Newman Photography, Cork and Bottle, Blue Plate, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, West Hartford Boys Travel Basketball, Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, West Hartford Girls Lacrosse, and Hall's Market. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council to make broadcasts like tonight possible. Special thanks to Beth Barry Brown and her husband Tom for providing me with uh, extra warmth with this uh, vest here tonight. Very nice, very nice vest, yeah. it's uh, The kids are fired up out there. They're not feeling the coldness right now, um, but we are up here in the meat. Yeah. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> Pete Lamoureux, Jamie Tchaikovsky with you here tonight. Thanks to Micah, our director, also to uh, everybody associated with the broadcast, running the cameras. Jen Evans back at uh, Channel 5 in uh, Town Hall doing her usual stellar job as well. one nothing the score. Connard in front. The only goal happened with 7.20 left in the opening half. The senior, Kaylee Werner, able to knock one past Anna Bobruff, and uh, no fault of Bobruff on that one. She has been a stellar performer tonight, Jamie, a veritable brick wall for this Hall Warrior defense. Love to see the stats, love to see the saves. I think in the second half here, she's really stood on her head by herself. Mm. Now, defense is doing a nice job being down there, but she's making and stepping up and making these plays, which needs to fire up the rest, the rest of the folks. they got to get more possession, keep the ball, and get it upfield. Let's get up some opportunities for the Warriors. And I love the Kathy Callahan keeping up the pressure. She's not getting back and down at all. No. The, the, the Chieftains are out there. They're balling right now. Look at them. They're going at it right now. And this is off the hall timeout. Connor taking the offensive initiative. And it's kicked aside by Bob Roof. Get that out of here, she says, again, with a nice little play out to the side. Again, clearing the ball to the side, keeping it low, and getting it out of trouble. Nice job by Bob Roof. Shulkin right in the middle of it. As always, Lindsey Hammond was there as well for the counter chieftains. So since the ball was forced out of bounds by the defensive player, now the attacking team, Connor, gets the ball back at the 25-yard line. Again, travel five yards, touch one, which they did. More opportunities here. And nice step up. I can't see who, who that is on defense, but nice step up to get that ball to the wings. Maggie Grant did it initially for the Warriors. And now getting it out of trouble is... Uh, Chloe Nordyke on the field for one of the first times. Sisters playing out there, Natalie and Chloe, both yeah. very good lacrosse players as well. Chloe just a south. And they're bringing Lizzie back in. They're bringing the captain, Captain Washburn, in as well. You got to get, you got to get those those skilled players in there. Sure. No time like the present, right? With yeah. ten and a half to play. Now is their time. 
Nice defensive stand, though, for Hall to get the ball out. We'll see if they can keep some momentum coming out here. They battle for it near the 30-yard line, far side. Liz Pillow directed it ahead for Hall. And now we got a corner for Hall, which they possess the ball instead of dumping. Mm. And that was really important for Hall here. Now they got an opportunity. And so it would be great if they get a clean shot on goal or at least have their players in position for a rebound punch in. Sixth Insert to the top. Let's see if they blast or do they pass. They Way blast. to come out. Oh, Good defense. Isabel Lubin that yeah. time for Connor. Izzy always has been aggressive. I've had her in the youth leagues back in the days. And on lacrosse, too, an aggressive, fast player. And she flew out there. The first defender that comes out of the cage that attacks ball is called a flyer. And it can be a dangerous spot because you're going into, a lot of times, a hard shot coming back at goal. So it takes someone with a lot of guts. And sure. as, as he just showed that. Called by Kathy Callahan, one of her most improved players in the 2017 campaign. Yeah, she is an athlete. She can pick up any sport, really, very quickly and be <laughs> proficient at it speed and athleticism and a great brain for, for sports and spacing. There's Maloney in the middle of things again for the Chieftains. Both teams show spacing's huge in basketball, soccer, lacrosse, field hockey. Spacing is everything. Taking the space and having adequate space between you and your players, whether it be on defense or on offense. And both teams show a very nice job of spacing this field. Got a little fast break here. We got one, one back though, which is good. This was Warner on the attack for the Chieftains, far side of the field. She's been a pesky left forward today, hasn't she? She has. Yeah. The only goal so far. We're down to eight and a half to play in regulation. So here we go. And it's called changing field. So they started on the right-hand side. Now they came over to the near side here. And changing fields to catch the defense off guard, which is a nice play right here. Here's Dugan for the Warriors. It's almost obstruction there. See how she was using her body to prevent that? It wasn't, but it almost was. And that's what the referee is looking at to make sure that the defensive player can play the ball. Swing and a miss that time by Pillow. So it's a hack. It's a poke check by, uh, by Washburn, a poke check. But it, if you poke and hit the stick and not the ball, it's a, turn, it's a, it's a foul. Okay. It's a call to hack. And Lizzie, very nice tackle. There, and it's going up. It's a push. There really isn't any supposed to be any major body contact, no pushing, no touching of the other player at all in field hockey. And so you can see that pretty closely. It's a raised stick by Lizzie Pillow. It's coming up Connor's ball. But look, it, they did not possess and they turned it over. Yeah, because they, they tried the long outlet pass, tried to get into ball. transition stick very on quickly. Ball, stick on ball, stick on ball. There's <laughs> one thing to say, <laughs> stick on ball. <laughs> and it's almost like a dog pushing a rock, pushing a rock, pushing a rock. Right. Here comes Maggie. Sliding Let's ahead. See what we got here. Good that defense like that time. There. With Shawnee defensively. So they're a little alone down here. You need one more defender back for Hall. Okay, they have the ball. Pomerleau tried to start it down the right side. Looking for Shumi. You only have two warriors on the left back and then you see the four Connor one ball over that and you're gonna have a fast break so and big numbers for Connor in that yeah. case. but what they're doing is they're, they're pushing up a defender to get more offensive pressure so they can get the ball up and they sense the urgency with six and a half to play yeah and they need to and here we go intercepted by the Chieftains nice stop good pass through the neutral zone yeah. See, they're working together. Release, There's release, release. Pass was just behind mm -hmm. Warner that time. And as Goodman tried to feed it to her, we have a whistle on the play. Good opportunity here for Crawford. Crawford for Hall. But three Connor defenders are back. Allie She's Crawford comes away with it. Good. In good position by Lizzie. Here's Pillow. It's a miss hit there. She could have pushed that. There's a slap hit and a push hit. Push it keeps the ball down on the ground a little bit more. Slap hit gets it there faster. But if you want to possess the ball, you do push, push passes okay. versus a slap hit. 
just easier to handle the ball when it's coming in on the grass versus that one where the hop was a nice handle by Werner to get that. Very nice. Off the hop. Defense goes down and Palmer Lolo able to recover. She and Werner come together on the far side of the field. And Olivia gets it ahead. It was intended for Shumi, knocked away. Now Hall tries to start the attack again. Good intercept in the midfield. Yeah, that was a very nice block. Work these sidelines. Love to see a, a tied up game and see what it looks like in the last five minutes. It'd be fun. Right. That's what we had when Steve and I did the soccer doubleheader here. Connor uh, boys were behind 2-0, two, two and they tied it up in the second half on this wow. very field. Grace Polk out there right now, too. Uh, senior here at Hall. Multiple sport player. Right. Basketball and uh, lacrosse as well with field hockey. Kids are impressive. And oh, they and are. And their grades are incredible, too. Where do they get the time? I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't. And just incredible kids. And you meet them, and they're polite on top of it all. Just the whole package. Exactly. Pleasure to, pleasure to work with these kids. Yeah, no doubt. Catherine Washburn trying to battle for it on the near side, right in front of the hall bench. Hall ball coming up. A little under four minutes to go. Time certainly an ally Polk of the Connor Chieftains. Here's Pillow. Slides it ahead. Intended for Dugan. Dugan wins that one-on-one -on -one battle. She comes to the near side. Let's try the left corner. Let's Dugan, let's go in the left corner and then cross it. She tried a slide pass ahead for Crawford. Here Pillow we go. Good away. opportunity here. Either a shot. Boom. They score! There it is. The equalizer with 323 to go here in the second half. And the game is tied at one. It just got a little bit warm in here, didn't it? It did. <laughs> Same with the parents. They're not complaining about the coldness now. They're thinking about, whew, we got ourselves a ball game. They cleared it beautifully up the near side on the left side and then came in on that 45-degree angle. Beautiful job by Hall, taking advantage of that opportunity, that opening. Good job by them. Allie Crawford, the sophomore transfer from the state of Ohio, getting the equalizer. We're back-to-back -back here. They're going at it again. They're feeling it. The momentum is shifting. That's a nice clearing long hit. Again, intercepted by Pillow and more pressure by Hall coming. Good D by Connor. Get in the neutral zone. Got a fast break here in Zoe. Zoe trying to get behind the defense. There's On a the shot. fly. Tough Towards hit. the net. It's loose. Right on the goal line. Beautiful defense there. I loved it. Wow. Game saving. I think it was Maggie Grant. Looks like she's got a wounded, um, like a, a quad muscle, but beautiful defense. Bob Ruff stays locked on. Went underneath that person's leg, and she's still caught. Here comes Marin Beverly. And look at the left forward, number 11, coming up. Crawford up the field, giving Marin an option to go to. That's a hack coming up. That's Connor Ball. Here we go. Got it back the other direction with the outlet pass intercepted. That was Washburn on the interception, and she'll be the one to put it in play for the Warriors. Right there was a game-saving save. Game-saving by uh, Maggie Grant down there because it got behind the goalie, and she didn't just whack it. She controlled it, pulled it out to the side. An impressive play by a defender. Showed great poise. I love it. It's That's where the stick skills creates the confidence. And you have the athletic mind to do the right thing versus just whacking and cracking. 100 seconds to go in this one. Tied at one. Still a Connor ball. And Jamie, we could be headed to overtime for the second year in a row. These two teams played to a 2-2 draw a year ago. And I say bring it on. <laughs> Overtime's great. They go down to 7v7. And it's a faster game with more spaces and more opportunities. So... It feels like a fast break the whole time. Yeah. It's like they do in the NHL when they go three on three for the extra session. It's so great. So in some cases, that kind of ball that goes out of bounds, 30, 40 yards, it's, it's almost like sometimes when you throw an interception in the NFL, it acts as a punt. Actually, yeah, yeah. exactly. You got a 40-yard clear all the way down there. 
gives yourself a chance to reset your defense. If there was a lot of pressure, you didn't have the numbers. So we got a timeout here. They're going to plan for the next 53 seconds, and Kathy Cardini Callahan, I keep saying her maiden name in there because that's <laughs> I knew her before, that's how you know before that, yeah. Uh, and uh, she's going to plan on what's the attack there. What, what are they going to do here? But nice, nice job. What happened is that Hall was really punching on the right-hand side. They came over on the left-hand side, and they found some openings. So normally they go out to the right, come on up, down to the corner, cross the ball. But sometimes you have to change the direction or change fields, they call that in soccer. Bring it to the left-hand side, bring it up. The defense is slow to re recover. And then I think it was, was it Washburn or Crawford that stuck that ball Crawford in? got yeah, it. Yeah, nice wow. little angle to the goal, popped it in. So that, that technique worked this time, which was great. Talking about Allie Crawford, we talked about how she came here with her family from Ohio. Yeah. Has adapted very, very well. And... Uh, one of the speedier players, according to Kat Hanks, on the team, and she showed and utilized that speed there for the equalizer. Yeah, this is speed in this sport as well as lacrosse. Speed and skill, to me, defines the varsity athlete at sure. any at any sport. Sure. And uh, this is another example of it. These kids are really impressive athletes, I yeah. have to tell you, because I've played this game a couple times, and, and yeah, I'm sore for two weeks after playing them with these kids. <laughs> And they, they, and go, they go right out and then do something else the next day, no problem at all. Yeah, the endurance they have is just really impressive. It is. Half minute to go. Pass ahead. Here. Nice clearing ball. Here comes another insert here. See if Pillow's getting it out. Richard Dugan for Hall. Here's Maloney for the Chieftains. That's obstruction. And that's it. see how her back was to the player. Didn't let her play that ball. So they should have called obstruction. They called something. Okay. So it looks like the, the player in basketball trying to post up then. It, exactly. It goes, uh, goes against everything that you have in your mind. Right. We got ourselves overtime, Pete. You we fired up? Share. Yeah, absolutely. Rock and roll. The end of regulation time with your score. Connard won and Hall won as you continue to watch high school sports as presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on Channel 5. And speaking of the council, they'd like to invite you to the 5th Annual Tailgate Fundraiser to support athletics at Connard and Hall High Schools. The event will be held November 11th at Town Hall from 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 and it includes food, beverage, and a silent auction. The War Chief Sports Council honors a coach of the year from both Hall and Connard at the tailgate event. Please come to celebrate high school athletics in West Hartford November 11th from 6.30 to 10.30 at Town Hall for a great cause and a great night to celebrate high school sports. All proceeds from the event go directly to support Hall and Conard Athletics. For more information and to purchase your tickets, please visit their website at war-chief.net. Speaking of the council, one more time, they'd like to thank our fine sponsors at the all-state level, including Keating Insurance, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, College Prep Express, Cricket Press, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council. Strategy, Jamie Tchaikovsky, as we go to overtime here, tied at one. What would both coaches be thinking about here? You're going to get your best skilled players that can control the ball uh, out there, and you need that coupled with some speed. You have to have it. Uh, you got to psych up your goalies and let them know that um, the game doesn't wait on their shoulders because you have seven other people that has to go through to get there. And so you have to tell them, to don't worry about making a mistake, just play your goal position. But you want to have your skilled players out there that can handle the ball and challenge because there's lots of space. So when you have space like this, the person that can possess the ball and do pullbacks and control the balls and deeks, they're the ones that win. Speaking of goaltending, Anna Bobrov, what a show that she put on in the second half. She was in full lockdown mode for sure. Yeah, Connor really was relatively dominant uh, in reference to firing shots on goal, but Bobrov said, I'm not, not going to let it happen this day. And the second half was really terrific display of goaltending by taking chances and coming out far yeah. to stop that ball and hopefully help initiate the fast break for Hall. So I give her a lot of credit uh, for her, her goal work and a lot of credit to Connor for the kind of pressure they put on them. So they're probably saying, boy, we should have punched a couple of those in. And, and defense says, no, not today. Right. So let's see what, what breaks here, you know, which one's going to bend and which one's going to break. Sure. So seven on seven, as you talked about. Ten minutes are put on the clock. 
Sudden death? Sudden, or? sudden, sudden victory. Sudden yeah. victory, yeah. okay. <laughs> in our new terminology in the rule books, they go with sudden victory. Right, okay. Slight edge to, to Hall because they have the momentum of scoring the last goal, or does it go to the, the home team because they've dominated more of the play tonight? I would, I would say a slight edge to Connor because I think their midfield play has just been a little bit more dominating in reference to controlling the ball. Yeah. All right. Uh, but anything can happen, so this game's wide open. Sure. Yeah. Like you said, it's a, it's a wide open, fast break, track meet type of exactly. seven on seven exactly. performance Let's here. Last time I checked, I don't think there's any fantasy football or any fantasy uh, field hockey, so I don't know which player I can put my money on here. <laughs> Who would be the most expensive in draft here? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, it's uh, it's an actual uh, pleasure to be here, and so thanks for inviting me to come oh, and help. Well, thank you so much. I mean, your insight has been terrific. Uh, and, and uh, These kids and coaches in both programs are awesome. I'll represent them anywhere, anytime, anyplace. They, they really are great. And not to go in there talk about all the circumstances, but trying times for yourself and to, to come cross country as you did today. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been two hours and no one looked at a phone, not a kid or us. And wow. that's great. Yeah. No cell phones today. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Connor. What good defense by the Warriors. And a whistle on the play. So our viewers can see just a different look on the field. It just really is. And, and All that open a, space, Jamie. It's fast. It's fast. Your, your back defender has to be a really good decision maker because they have to make a decision. Do I go to ball or do I drop? Maggie Grant's pass deflected, but controlled by Washburn. So you'll see more of the longer passes now because there's space to go to. You're not sure. going through five people. Or like to say, going through the mall at Christmas time. It's just too crowded. Now it's <laughs> opened up. That's a good one. Far side, Lubin. Gets it to Warner. Her pass, though, intercepted and slapped back the other way by Washburn. We haven't talked about her much, though, but uh, on Connor, I, can't, I think it's number 16 out there. Is it number 16? Vanessa Goodman. Vanessa Goodman. She is a legit athlete, and she's out there for her speed. And speed, I'm sure, is a just the number one asset you want to have in this seven really on seven. Really is, really is. It, it, they, a lot of times they'll do a dump and chase and you get that kind of speed out there. Here's Washburn for the Warriors. Tried to slide it ahead, but Maloney knocked it out of play. Hall, a good opportunity here, an insert at the 30 yard line. She can go ahead and self start this and possess it like she is right there. Control, draw the defense in and then you can move it to the next open player. Here's Washburn for Hall. Dump and chase, get the rebound here. McDill Kill. says get McDill it out. Got it out. And now we got a little bit of a fast break. Shulkin in full speed, try to get it ahead, nice intercepted. by Maggie Grant. That's a very nice open field defensive play. Taking the ball on the fly is tough. And here we go with a nice insert. Crawford tried to slide it in front, nobody home. Looks like Grace Knight will clearing the ball and that's fine. Gives, them ch gives their defense a chance to recover. Mm -hmm going to be Hall, Hall ball at the 20-yard line. Maybe. Again, remember, inside the 25-yard line, they have to let it, they have to travel five yards or they have to touch someone else. And it's right below the 25-yard line. So that just traveled five, and they can go ahead and insert. Even from 25, 30 yards away, they can blast it into the circle now. Crawford's pass knocked down at the defense. It was an aerial ball hit the player, so it's Connor ball coming up. Intercepted. You and I have talked about that all night, right? Up the, the middle. That long hit up the <laughs> middle. <laughs> Here's Dugan. There won't be any fingernails left. I'll chew them right off as a coach. <laughs> I'm sure. Both coaches, every time they see that, would do that. Far side and a whistle. Hall ball coming back up. Nice self-start quickly. Way to think about it, Olivia. That's Palmer Lowe. Far side. Nice block and tackle. Here goes Vanessa. And a takeaway by Maggie Grant. And another whistle on the far side. Ball coming up. It was a hack by the uh, Hall player. And pushed by White. Pushed by White. Blue ball coming up. That would have been Shulkin off to the races yeah, with that, that great speed. That would have been fun to watch. Yeah. Three and a half gone by in the overtime. We play 10 minutes in the extra session. 6.30 left. Tied at one. Werner in the first half for Connor Crawford tied it in the nice second save, half. Hall. Nice save, nice save. Right there in it front. is. Oh, it's just kicked away Emily. by the goaltender, McDill. Emily comes out. And wow. It, 
She's calm. She's calm on there. She's not sweating bullets. <laughs> oh, Dugan had an excellent opportunity that time. It was time. a great save in the corner down there because it was a nice dump to the corner. She saved it inbounds, brought it in front of the goalie for someone to pound it in. There's Again, off-ball movement is huge. They throw a ball in front of that goal. Your off-ball players have to be in there to pound it in. Palmer loses shot pass intercepted. And here we go. We got a two-on-one coming. And there we go. And now it's a race. And back defensively for Connor was Sinead Murray. That, that saved the fast break right there. On the reverse. attack, Connor. Oh, she had the reverse going in there. Oh. Ellie Brown battling for it. Oh, a nice move. And there's another reverse shot at it. Trying to find Anna Santoro wide open in front. Haven't called her name much tonight. And she's been playing field hockey since the youth as well. I mean, these kids put a lot of time into this game. Top scorer for this Connor team. We have five minutes left in this game with a nice opportunity here. Looks like at the 25 yard line. So it went over the end line, last touch by uh, Hall. So it's countered ball at the 25 yard line. Here's Maloney. Insert there. Bobber for the kick out. Like to see that going to the wings and not up the middle, but now we got a fast break. Opportunity for the Warriors. Grace Nidal has to take an angle nicely. She redirects and channels the player to the side. Nice job by Grace. Her stick is down on the ground. Great defense. Nice job by Grace. I would have called it destruction there as well. <laughs> <laughs> she but battled Kevin Bridget Nelson. Dugan and she battled her effectively all the way down the field, like you said, close the angle on her. And that's what this sport is, man. It's about competing one on one. Take it to the player. They both have equal opportunity to play that ball. Looks like uh, Polk is going to come into the game here. And Grace back in the corner here. It looks like. Here's Pillow. Ashani's playing back center. And then see how Grace is dropping because Ashani two, stepped up. Two, two on, on one. one. Opportunity for Dugan. The shot. And Kick a big save, save still in the front. And Pillow had the opportunity at the rebound. It's going to be a penalty corner. Penalty corner for Hall. A huge opportunity for Hall right now. Dugan, corner. Dugan had the opportunity. And she'll get one right here. So you have three defenders and a goalie in the cage now on these, on these uh, penalty corners. And Hall can have their entire team up on that circle if they want to. They keep one back just in case of a uh, fast break. But this is, uh, this is normally where you see a hard shot coming in and not as much passing. Because you have so much room. Bingo. There's a shot towards the net. Pillow Reverse. tries to get the rebound. Initial shot taken by Maggie Grant. Looks like Maloney cleared the ball. Now that's a beautiful way to get the ball out of your zone, in control, still in bounds. And now Connor gets the ball. Huge play by Maloney. Terrific transition. Maggie Grant having a nice overtime here, stepping up as a defender, jumping in and taking away those opportunities. It was a nice job by her. The center back and the center mid and the center forward, they tend to get a lot of talking on the microphone, uh, but they're an integral parts of, uh, of the squad. Dugan in a battle for it there with Grace Nidal. 2.25 to go here in the extra session. Tied at one. It's going to be hall ball now. It's going to be outside what they call the broken line circle, which is a, a rim that's outside of the 16-yard. Again, you're in the area where it has to travel five or touch one. She travels five. Now she can insert any time. That's pillow. Good D far side by Maloney. You can see the strategy changes a bit when you have only seven on seven. So those long, long hits, that they're actually effective to get uh, out of your territory and get your uh, defense to kind of recalibrate and get set up again. Sure. So your strategy changes a little bit in, in this type of format. Maloney tries to get it ahead for Connor. Got about 100 seconds left in this overtime. We're going to see some action here. Last year they played to a 2-2 two -two draw, uh -huh. and this year so far 1-1 one -one is a timeout on the field with exactly a minute and a half to play. As Maggie Grant comes off, replaced by Olivia Pomerleau. Maybe an injury there. I hope she's okay. Yeah, she took something off the right cheek. Ouch. 
unfortunately. And the long pass ahead for Crawford. Good D by the Chieftains. That's Nidal again. She's been a stalwart defensively, Jamie, hasn't she? Yeah, she really has uh, on the defensive side. Her and Maggie are kind of taking their bouts back and forth. Maggie Grant on one side, Grape on the other. Mm. Libby Geiser making a nice little play, coming to the side, bringing the ball up. Nice little stop by, by Dugan. Dugan's having a nice game as well. He really is. Good move. One minute left in the a minute to play. So Here's Allie Crawford. Crawford had a nice, nice pull to create some space to get it there. They're looking to try to get a penalty corner now. They're trying to hit it off someone's ankles or something. If you don't have a clean shot, you're trying for a penalty corner. Sure. Field hockey's equivalent to the corner kick, eh? No doubt. Libby Geister's battling for the side. Elizabeth Pillow all over the ball. Hall ball coming up. We're probably down there about 20 seconds now. Long pass. That's a dump and chase. It's going to go out. 16-yard ball coming out for Hall. And, and here's yeah. Palmer Lou to put it in play for Hall. And that should do it. 10 seconds to go. They're counting it down. She's taking her time. Yeah, nothing's going to happen here. To the near side, this is Pillow. Geisler intercepts, and the horn sounds. And, and, you and you see the Hall Warriors going to mob their goaltender. She's the reason this game ended in a 1-1 tie, Jamie. She really is. I think there's a lot of standout players on both sides, but if there's one player you have to pick two, the person that got them back in the game was Barbara. Any of those balls could have trickled by, and she sure. said not today. Right. I was really impressed the way how aggressive she was, and, being that aggressive, sometimes you give up a goal or two, but you have to do it. Got to fire your team up. This time it worked for them. They came back and got a critical tie. These were balanced teams going in. We said it's going to be a close game. All of a sudden, we know what we're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> those first 10 minutes, I thought of the second half, where she made a lot of critical saves with her team still down 1-0. One, one gets by her at that time. It gets to 2 nothing. Probably game, set, and match at that point. Yeah, no no doubt about it. Uh, the uh, the, the play that was really impressive is uh, Maeve Maloney's play, where she was dominant on the ball there. Yeah. Uh, I think um, Elizabeth Pillow, I like to call her Lizzie, in the second half, towards the last 10 minutes of the second half, she was on ball a lot. And I could tell the stick was on ball. She wasn't dumping and chasing. And so she helped calm things down at the last 10 minutes of the second half to keep Hall in it. And so those two players, I think they were kind of almost battling back and forth sure. uh, that way. And there's some beautiful defensive plays on both sides. Grace Nidal and Maggie Grant, just two of the ones that was, many of them were just stepping in and doing a nice job. But overall, well coached, well balanced, a nice game. And well described by you, sir. Oh, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Oh, this is great. Jamie Tchaikovsky on the call tonight with me here at McKee Stadium as the field hockey match ends in a 1-1 draw. We're going to take a brief time out, and when we rejoin you, we hope to have both coaches and a star of the game to interview down on the field. Again, the final score tonight, Connor won, Hall won. Back with more as you watch continuing coverage of West Hartford High School sports as presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on WHC-TV Channel 5 and online at whctv.org. Back after this.
Oh, okay. Oh, no worries. <laughs> your chances in the upcoming tournament. You guys ready? Yes, I think we have a very high shot. Good luck, good luck in that regard. Thank you. Good luck to you guys. Definitely going forward. Jamie, want to talk to the Connor kids? I'd love to. And congratulations to both teams. You guys were excellent today. It was a great, evenly balanced team. Coach, what do you think? How does this situate you for the playoffs coming up? Excellent. The energy was great, so we're ready to go into playoffs with that same energy. Excellent. We were really impressed with you. Kind of control you had in the midfield. And we look at uh, Maeve Maloney as the one that was around the ball a lot. Uh, what's it like playing against these ladies? Well, um, I mean, as I said, we all we were playing together. We all know each other, so it's fun to see how we've grown and like, how well we've gotten. Through. What do you guys want to improve upon as you start going in there? What do you want to work on as you get ready for the playoffs? And just finishing. Thank you guys for all your input. And congratulations on a great game. Thank you. Jamie, thank you. And again, a 1 1 tie, the final here tonight at McKee Stadium. We'd like to thank everybody involved with the broadcast from the Lord Chief Sports Council, also to everybody at Channel 5 as well. A reminder that tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock, we'll have unified soccer for you. Emanates right here from Connor. We'll be inside and watch those special kids from West Hartford and seven other towns around the area. Final score again tonight, Connor won all one for Jamie. This is Pete. Thanks for watching. Till next time, so long. Everybody.